Hi, I'm Jen Holmgren, and welcome to Democratic Dialogue. And uh, with me today is Kelly Knox, and Kelly is a Cape Ann fixture. She is uh, a registered Democrat, and she works for The Open Door as a grant writer. And we asked her to be on Democratic Dialogue today because she is the founder of The Kindness Project. So thank you very much for being with us today, Kelly. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, I'm very excited about our conversation. So glad you're here. So what? What is the Kindness Project? So the mission is to strengthen communities through the culture of kindness, which kind of means nothing. I mean, it has a meaning to it, but behind that is essentially having conversations and igniting conversation about kindness, what kindnesses exist, what kindness means to ourselves, what it means to our families, and to the community at large. Mm -hmm. And what happens is um, people really start understanding the complexity and the, the deepness of, of kindness. And it's just not this frou-frou-y kind of thing. It's complex. Kindness is complex. Interesting. Yeah. So what has our community response to the Kindness Project been since its inception? And when, when, when did you, uh, when was it founded, basically? So it, we, f we founded it in, um, and started having conversations in 2018 about mm -hmm. it and shaping it up into what it turned out to be for this year. And it's still, you know, it's in the nascent stage and it's still create, you know, becoming what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But um, what we thought we'd do is have three um, kindness cafes, which we've had all three of them. Mm -hmm. And more than 100 people have participated uh -huh. and that's unduplicated. So there was about an average of 50 people at each of the cafes. So, and you came to our last one. I was very glad to have attended. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that, I think that one was one of my favorites. But um, yeah, so what we did was we created decks of cards and each um, cafe had its own deck and they were, um, had statements on them. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of started conversations about kindness at the different tables. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, people really are enjoying those conversations and they continue after the cafes among the friends that showed up and new new friendships emerged excellent yeah i remember uh at the august 18th kindness cafe there were people from way out of town uh who came up and that was very exciting yeah so. yeah and i um i'm gathering more and more people liking the facebook page from all over mm -hmm. pennsylvania Nantucket, because I just came back from Nantucket. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So, did you do a kindness cafe in Nantucket? No, no. I was invited over there by um, Reverend Linda Simmons to do a sermon at the church about the kindness cafe, oh. and then on Monday we did a kindness circle. Is what it turned out to be. So I, I gave an overview of what um, we're thinking about the kindness project at the moment, mm -hmm. and we just had this fabulous conversation. There was probably 20 of us and we just all talked about kindness. <laughs> so what what exactly is the greater depth of kindness? It's it, so you're I mean you're absolutely right. It's not just this surface thing, mm -hmm. but what are what are some people's perceptions of what it means to be kind or to show kindness in the world? Mm -hmm. Well, some people really stick to let's do kind acts and kind acts are really important and it's, if you experience a kind act, sometimes it can really shift your day. Sometimes it can shift your whole life. Hmm. It can shift you out of a depression to experience a real deep kindness. So kind acts are really important. Mm -hmm. And a lot of programs and projects are going on to multiply kind acts. Mm -hmm. So but the kindness project is different in we're more looking to help people understand what it takes to be kind. And to enter, you know, just to approach life in a in a kind way, and yet stand strong within yourself and within your own values. Mm -hmm. And as we're as the community starts to talk about it more and more, and you know, I have discussions with um, counselors such as yourself and the mayor. We're hoping to maybe somehow create um, a way to develop policy, create policy through the lens of kindness. That is very interesting and uh, I'm awfully grateful that you are focusing on that as well. Uh, historically uh, there have certainly been 
policy-driven acts of, of kindness, uh, as we could call them, like the New Deal. Uh, right. That was a big one. Uh, right. And uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm wondering, party-wise, um, Democrats and Republicans uh, both act um, uh, in, in a way that is driven by their perception of kindness. Sure. But is there a way to sort of meet in the middle uh, to, to be kind uh, no matter where you're coming from value-wise so that it benefits the common good, the greater good, which is, which is a democratic value? Right. So I think the difficulty there is, is how significantly discourse has changed over mm -hmm. the last 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I can get into a blame game there, but um, let's not do that. Let's but not. There's, there's such anger on both sides mm -hmm. and righteousness on both sides that I think it's difficult to find that middle ground. And I don't know if, you know, I mean, the Kindness Project seeks pretty much to do that. To seeks find the middle ground. So, to find the middle ground, because who can argue with kindness? And the truth is, people can argue with kindness. I've, I've heard a number of conversations that turn into a little bit of arguments about kindness. And mm -hmm. it's because everybody has different values. And people, when you hear the word kindness, people have a, a different, some people have a visceral reaction to it. I, I, one woman was, was appalled at the idea of talking about kindness because she really just didn't like the word kindness because to her it, it seemed like a patting of yourself on the back or meaninglessness, superficial kind of thing to do. Mm. And, and I understand having that reaction. And I kind of wish she had participated in the, the dinners because then she could have maybe reframed her definition of kindness. And that's what this is about reframing the definition of kindness. Because you can be kind and you can be strong. And so back to your question, I think that you need to respect someone else's values mm -hmm. and um, how, how you find a middle ground with that. So, you know, one of, one of the examples I give is um, if, some, if a community itself values, um, believes that life starts in inception mm -hmm. and therefore um, wants to eliminate abortions mm -hmm. to the best of their ability, um, you know, what's the kindest thing, what's the kindest policy that they can pass to address that issue? And so, I mean, I, I have an answer, but I'm going to leave it as a question. It is a good question yeah. because it's... I mean, it's it's a can of worms, as you say. Right. So it's a it's a big can of worms. Yes. And um, you know, people have the right to have that value, and so we can argue about that um, belief system. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't really argue about someone's belief system and their values, but you mm -hmm. can argue about the policy. Yes, that's very true. So that's what I want to bring it back to. Let's 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 argue about the policy and argue respectfully. Yes. And with maybe. A listening presence, not necessarily uh, restraining oh. judgment, yes. right? Yes, that's fabulous. A listening presence. A listening presence. The the gentleman um, from Nantucket. <laughs> uh, he was at the. He was a, a selectman. His name was Jason. I can't remember his last name, mm -hmm. but he ran on the whole concept that for him kindness is listening to understand ah. rather than to respond, and that's his whole premise of kindness. Wow. When he works at a policy level. Wow. And it was like, great. So that sort of takes the politics out of it. Right. To an extent. To an extent. To an extent. I mean, certainly any politician and, and any person yeah. is going to bring their own values and their own idea of politics mm -hmm. to any discussion, right? Sure. Yeah. So it, I think it's important, too, and this is what I'm, I'm, I'm going to hopefully um, help people do is I think it's important for municipalities to adopt a set of values. Hmm. And it's, it's a complicated process, I'm, I'm, I'm certain, but um, Scotland has done it. So if a country can do it, certainly a town and a city can do it. Scotland has adopted values. It's, Scotland has a whole strategic framework based on kindness. I'm going to write this down. So yeah. a strategic framework, an entire country has a strategic framework. So what are some examples of that? Um, so 
we have a globally competitive, entrepreneurial, inclusive, and sustainable economy. We tackle poverty by sharing opportunities, wealth, and power more equally. Hmm. Um, let's get another good one. We are healthy and active. We value, enjoy, protect, and enhance our environment. So they have all of these and um, their values. We, have, we are a society which treats all our people, this is their core values, all of our people with kindness, dignity, and compassion. And it goes on. Those ideals are human ideals, really. It, I mean, it almost sounds like our Bill of Rights. Yeah. 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 And so it's, um, I think if, if municipalities would, ad would adopt their own set of values and, and belief systems and then create policy based on that, it would be pretty clean and clear politics, do you know, because you have this, this framework. So as a municipality, Gloucester has recently reinstituted its Human Rights Commission. I didn't know oh, if you were aware of that. I had heard that uh, was going to happen, yes. We're looking for people. If, uh, if you would like to apply to be on it, uh, that would be wonderful. Sure, you would be sure. such a great asset. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, and uh, maybe that the Human Rights Commission could review our code of ordinances and make some recommendations sure. based on that. I mean, yeah. and another, another question I have is, and, and this, is, this is true for me as well, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly learning about how to have productive conversations with people. Right. I come from a specific set of values and a specific set of uh, morals. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so listening um, is important to me too. I want to get, I want to get my constituents' viewpoints correct. Uh, children now growing up in this world of, of angry discourse, uh, maybe don't necessarily have the best role models on TV when it comes to this stuff. So right. what would be a good way to integrate something like the Kindness Project into the curriculum, let's say, at yeah. Gloucester Schools? That, that's a grand idea. It's, it's on the list of, of you know, future endeavors. Excellent. But um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't really have a good answer for you, but it, it would definitely take, you know, um, a, a, a teacher or an educator, I suppose I want to say, uh, an interest of an educator to help create that and make that happen. Uh, our teachers so, are certainly. Yeah. And I, th I think as the time goes on too, as, as we learn more about what the Kindness Project is becoming, when we become clearer and we can um, have our, uh, the capacity to explain better what we're doing, mm -hmm. um, that these ideas like you're having and these conversations that we're having will, will come to fruition. Well, I guess I misspoke. Uh, our school's guidance departments do teach things like boundaries and assertiveness and respect uh, and uh, bullying, while it's still a problem everywhere, sure. uh, is um, not tolerated mm -hmm. uh, in Gloucester schools. And uh, I'd love to talk with you at some point about um, what interventions have taken place and maybe maybe once the kindness project gets um, a little yeah. more momentum going, yeah. um, you'd be interested in uh, in meeting with the guidance department. Sure, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that would be grand. Yeah, um, yeah, and you bring up a good point because there's a lot of things I don't know, and that and that that's what I learned this year. That there's so much I did not know. The kind things that go on in this city. I knew it was a kind city. I always joke that it the the driving is so kind you can get killed because everybody's so nice. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it's dangerous to be so nice when you're driving. Um, but um, yeah, the kind things that happen here are are fabulous, and and there's there's a lot behind it that I don't know, like a lot about the um, your work that I don't know and don't understand. I keep saying to myself, I'm gonna go to a meeting, and I don't get there. Well, I mean, yeah. you're busy. Yeah. It's not. It's not as though. I mean, people say this to me all the time. I feel bad. I I haven't been to as many meetings as I want to. But it's not for lack of trying. It's because you are trying to pace yourself. You're trying to work and live your own life. And you also need room for Kelly. Yeah. You need room to be just comfortable and your own person and relax. And that's absolutely fine. Yeah. You still find out what's going on. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I ask questions. Yeah. I read the paper. Exactly. Yeah. I would love it if people were more civically engaged uh, on, on the level of coming to
council mm -hmm. meetings, but mm -hmm. I know that that's not realistic for a lot of people, and that's all right. Right, yeah. Yeah. It is okay. Yeah. I want to circle back to something that I just recalled that, um, now I'm going to forget what it was, based on, oh, you were speaking about your own personal values and your own moral belief system. Mm -hmm. I think this is what I thought about when you, when you said that is, and, and I do this too, is when people judge our values or say something against our values, we take it personally. Yes. I mean, it, it's not necessarily personal. And no. even if it is personal, it's not to our benefit to take it personally. And if it's such a hard thing to do. Yes. And I don't think so. It's, it's practice. It's practice. I mean, as, as, a, as a nurse, I completely understand exactly how, yes. how that so feels and how that is. Uh, I, <laughs> I, over many years of being a healthcare worker and taking things personally, I, it, it's almost like a muscle. It's, it's instinct. You think to yourself, well, this is not about me. It's right. about them, and, and that's fine, and this is what they had to say in the moment, and I'm just going to let them move through that, and I am going to go in the other room until they're ready to talk to me. And, and I, I mean, that's, it's a skill that, that people have to learn. Yeah, As, and, and you, that's a skill you can bring into your policy work because somebody's going to scream and yell at you yeah. when they don't agree with you, yeah. and you have to remember um, it's not really about you. It's not really about me. Yeah, it's, really it's the about uniform that we put on as yeah. city councilors exactly. and as school committee members and as the mayor and as city administrators. We, all of us, have dealt with that at some point, and it comes with the job. And that's yeah. you know, people take things very personally. You know, if let's say a pothole isn't filled for a year or two, and mm -hmm. they just they're dealing with it every day and dealing with it every day and oh my God, I, I just can't take it anymore. And they, they make an angry phone call and well, okay. I mean, yeah, I'd be angry too yeah. if that was me. Yeah, it builds up, builds up, builds yeah. up. And then you guys yeah. get the point of it, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and, and um, I think not taking things personally is the kindest thing that you can do for yourself to bring it back to kindness. Hmm. You know? That's a very good point. Yeah. So sometimes the kindest thing that you can do is, is take care of yourself. And it might not seem like a nice thing to someone else. So they might think that's not very kind. Do you th maybe they would think it's selfish yeah. when in fact it's self-preservation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and you get to decide what's kind and what's not kind. And that's boundaries. That is boundaries. Too. That's it all very comes down important. to boundaries. Really, kindness comes down to boundaries, I think. Yeah? yeah. Interesting. Like, how? Can you expand on that? Sure. Um, when I was younger, I ha had, a, I'm going to bring it to the personal here, so I was in a relationship and it ended. It was horrible. And oh. I was having a party. I was living with three other women and I was having a party. Yeah. And my um, ex-partner was coming over and I remember saying to her, you can come to the house mm -hmm. and I'm going to be kind to you because that's what I do. Wow. I'm just kind. But it doesn't mean, just you know, like, and so I set a boundary around that. Yeah. Okay. So that was very brave. That, yeah, and it was it was such an out, not normal for me. The setting uh -huh. that boundary was so not normal for me that today it's like thirty years later. I, I'm telling that story because I remember how, it, like, I felt good about myself. Yeah. So it's just like setting a boundary. And that's really, I mean, it does seem sort of like a small interaction, but it 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 spurred a seismic shift within you. It did. The, it, it you, did. I can do this. I can do this. Yeah. I can be kind, and it doesn't. And, and it's, the kindness is about me. It says everything about me. It doesn't say anything about anybody else. And it, it, it can be a selfish thing, and, and people might be listening to this and say, well, that's not kind, that's selfish. But, but it, it helped you, and it probably helped your ex-partner, too. Oh, it, 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 and it did. I mean, we're really good friends now. It's 30 years later. Well, all right, <laughs> good. So then there so was no confusion. Out. Right, and I think that's it. The, the more straightforward you can be with people, the kindest, the kind, that's the kind thing in politics, in personal life, in as long as you're able to speak your truth and, and talk about things without getting rude. I mean, it's so hard to do. It's so easy to say. We, we do that here in Gloucester. I mean, we, yeah. we speak the truth all the time. Yes. And, and sometimes it's rude, but yeah. mm, I mean, at the end of the day, we all still care about each other and we still let each other 
take the right of way yeah. when when we're turning right onto Main right. Street or you whatever. Let three cars go and then you go, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's how I. That's what I was taught. So I've only been here four years. See, I've learned a lot. You fit right <laughs> in. I, I feel like you've been here for a long time. I mean, yeah. longer than four years. Yeah, it's only been maybe five years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So uh, just a, a question, sure, sure. I guess, a, a more about policy. Um, so there's there's a quote. Uh, there are two lexicons in use in public policy. Mm -hmm. There's the language of metrics and value added of growth and resource allocation of regulation and of impact. And there is the language of kindness and grief, of loneliness, love, and friendship, of the ties that bind, our sense of identity, and of belonging. But rarely do policymakers speak both languages, I mean, especially on the job. Uh, so in order to develop a more just political system, we need to elect political leaders who speak both languages. So do you have any examples of local or state or national political leaders from either party or both parties who have spoken both languages. You know who I think speaks both languages really well, and this I'm not saying that I'm supporting her, I'm just saying that I believe this to be true, uh -huh. is Eliz Elizabeth Warren. She uh. really knows how to speak both languages. She's got the heart and she's got the strength. And, yeah. and sh she takes no crud, and yet she speaks the truth, and she's kind. She's one of the kindest politicians on the stage, from I what agree. I can tell. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I yeah. agree. I mean, talk about drawing clear po policy boundaries. Right. Like, she knows what she's doing. She's, she's very clear about, people might disagree with her, but all you can do is disagree with her. What a great example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So, I aspire to be more like Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. So, coming up on November 13th, it's World Kindness ah, Day, right? It is. Who, yes. So just a, a question on the history of that. Do you know when that began? I don't know. I'm, that's a great question. I'm going to have to look that up. But I, I believe either. it began I've... with Random Acts of Kindness, which is its own website and its ah. own program. So I think they started it many years ago. Okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and we're going to have a big Gloucester Kindness Bash. A Gloucester Kindness Bash. Yeah. So I'm very yeah. excited. It's at the Elks. I just sent in the check today. Oh, wonderful. I, I, yeah. Yeah, so I just started a fundraiser. I'm going to do it piece by piece. I'm like, let's raise money for the the Elks, and overnight raised, uh, I think it's three hundred and fifty dollars so far. Great work. So only have a little bit more to go just to pay for the venue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going. Good. I'm very excited Yay. about I'm it. Very excited. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, We're giving out um, two awards. I can't tell you who oh. because okay, it's a it's a secret for now. Yep. That's, I'm hoping that's... to I'm hoping to do a post this weekend. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I know we had been talking about this earlier, but we are spoiled for kindness in Gloucester, aren't we? I we mean, so, I mean, you work for the Open Door. We have uh, I, the Health Project. I work for the Health Project. Um, all of these organizations, actually, this pen came from Backyard Growers. Backyard uh, another Growers, another example. Another great yeah. example, yep. Mm -hmm. Food, kind. Everywhere. Senior care, kind. Senior care, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, all sorts of all sorts of things. Maritime so, Gloucester kind. Maritime Gloucester kind. Yeah. Yep, yep. Gloucester Museum School Camp kind. Exactly. Yeah. It's all over the place. Everywhere. And you know, the more you talk about kindness, the more you see it. Yeah. 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 So. Mm -hmm. Very true. So let's see. Um, as more and more people. Uh, do what you're doing and begin talking about the complexities of what it takes to be kind. So it's still waters run deep. Mm -hmm. uh, our world is going to change, as mm -hmm. you said. The people running for office will change. The power will change. Do you think that the drive for power uh, can change with the current balance of wealth in the United States as it is? Uh, because the top 20% of our population holds 80% of American wealth and the top 1% is more wealthy than the entire middle class combined. So it seems like money is power, but is there, is there kindness in that power? Well, it, it's always going to be right, that way, right? There's just going to be wealthy, there's going to be those without money, and mm -hmm. then all the way in between. Mm -hmm. There's a big gap now, so mm -hmm. middle class is, so the gap is getting bigger. I think, <laughs> really engaging the wealthy in 
these conversations is, is key. Um, you know, Nantucket mm -hmm. is, is a grand example of, yes. of this because there's, there's houses over there that cost nearly a billion dollars. Yes. And there's boats over there that I've never seen the size of before in my life. <laughs> I'm like, they are bigger than mansions. And the, so the wealth and, and then the people who live and work there can mm -hmm. barely afford um, rent. Yes. And, you know, homelessness, there's not like a significant number of homeless people, but, but the, there's homelessness out there. So the, the, the thing is huge. And that was part of our conversation this weekend, this past weekend. And um, yeah, and I think that engaging people in this type of conversation, what does it take to be kind, will maybe open minds to the responsibility the ultra-rich have in making sure that community remains an ecosystem. To use the word of my friend, Reverend Linda, she calls it eco-kindness. Eco-kindness. Yeah, kindness is an ecosystem, so it takes everyone working together to create community. And the foundation needs to be values such as kindness. And the ultra rich need to take the responsibility for their part. Thank you, Kelly. I wanna thank you very much for joining us on Democratic Dialogue today. Oh, thanks for asking. This was a lovely conversation and it's hard to believe the time is up. But, I know. Uh, join, join us at uh, the uh, Kindness Bash uh, on November 13th. I can't wait to go. Thank you for all of your work. Oh, thank you. Really, thank you. <laughs>